In this university quick tip, we're going to look at how to trace the outlines of text using nothing but Sketch and Tune. Last week we covered how to do this with the tracer object, and this week we're going to take a little bit of a different tactic. And I've got some text here, and the first thing that we need to do is add Sketch and Tune. Now, a lot of times you'll go ahead and create Sketch and Tune down here from the materials or something like that, but I actually want different Sketch and Tune materials for each of these text objects, and so I am going to actually sort of initialized sketch and tune by just adding sketch style tags onto each of the objects. And you'll see that that gave me three unique materials, one for each object. I'm going to select the first style tag here and I'm going to make sure that only splines is active. And down here I'm going to fold down the default visible and I'm going to change this to dots because that is the object that this is related to. We're going to go down here to the ampersand and I'm going to go ahead and put ampersand there. And again, I'm just going to enable splines and nothing else. And then dashes will do the same thing. I'm going to name this dashes and we'll disable everything but splines. So now Sketch and Tune is going to render these splines. In fact, there we go. We have Sketch and Tune lines. Now I want to go ahead and draw these lines progressively through the animation. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the material editor for one of these sketch lines. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that all three are selected so I can edit them all at the same time. On the adjustment tab here, you have different ways that you can adjust the strokes that are generated by Sketch and Tune, whether it be uh, in X and Y or having them overshoot various options here. And the one that you might have overlooked is the resize strokes option. So if we enable this, what we can do is actually resize the strokes themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and keyframe here at the end of my animation, the end parameter. And this works just like the sweep. I'm going to go down to frame zero and keyframe the end parameter at zero. And now if I go ahead and go into my render, make sure I'm outputting all frames and we'll go ahead and output this really quick you can see that we're drawing on all of these lines. So that's a really cool technique that is pure Sketch and Tune. Now, of course, I have here dots and dashes, which is indicative of the next step in our quick tip. And that's simply to go into the dots line material. And I'm going to go into the strokes tab, go down to the bottom. And here we have the option to enable a pattern. I'm going to go ahead and enable the dots pattern here and you can adjust the scale of that if you'd like we'll leave it at default I'll select the dashes and enable the pattern there and we'll leave it set to dashed you can even go in here and edit your pattern which is kind of cool uh, I'm just gonna cancel out of that and now if we render this out you'll see that we actually have dots and dashes so some really cool things you can accomplish here by using Sketch and Tune to outline your text. Now one last thing I want to show you is that if we apply a camera here, I'll activate this camera, and this just has a simple push in. But if we render this, what you're going to see is that the dots and dashes actually uh, give a little bit of a marching ants effect. They don't stay stuck, more or less which might be a look that you're going for. You can see the shimmer there and the marching ants effect. Uh, it might be a look that you're going for, but the way that you get around that is select all of your Sketch and Tune materials and go into the Render tab and set the pixel units here to world space instead of absolute pixels. When the pixel units is set to absolute pixels, the dots and dashes are going to be relative to the size of the object in screen space. So as the object gets bigger in the screen space, the dots and dashes will move. By switching the pixel units into world space, you're actually locking them in. So now we get consistent dots and dashes, and we can animate these right along. Now I've done this purely as a 2D effect, but you can of course apply this in three dimensions as well on any spline in Cinema 4D. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this quick tip, please like, share, and visit cineversity.com for more great tutorials and resources.